the great headlines at the time was, would you let your daughter go out with the Rolling Stone? For me, the Rolling Stone was kind of a first thing forbidden, you know, when you want. They looked like they were dangerous, you know, they looked like they might cause trouble in your street, you know. You just knew your grandmother didn't want them to hang around with you, you know. Because the Stones were always, uh, they were a bit menacing, I suppose, in them days. Everyone loved them, do you know what I mean? Hated them, but loved them. It's really through them that, that I, I, I kind of discovered uh, blues music and R&B anyway, you know, I got things back to front. Keith would always say that's why they formed, you know, to further this mission to bring the blues to England. You'd read about Mick Jagger liking Bo Diddley, Chuck Berry, Muddy Waters, who gave the group the name, Howling Wolf. The people who came to see the stars were people who never would have gone to see Muddy Waters. Didn't know he existed. It takes a stranger to discover what's in your backyard. And I don't think America, mainstream, wanted to know about the blues. Until the Stones came along that and they imported it back, they took it back to America. And then they discovered that there were people like bodyguarders, the, the, the Albert King, the BB Kings, you know. They discovered that these people are playing the same licks you know, that, that these, these men from England are playing. They made America sort of uh, rediscover their own, their own talent, really.
I think they were just totally influenced by the blues. You know, I mean, to their, even to their lifestyle. I mean, you know, because in those days, you know, to be a blues musician, you had to drink and you had to be into drugs. <laughs> so. Keith Richards was one of, one of punk rock's greatest pedestal heroes. He's like the living Count Dracula of rock and roll. Mick was just like really, you know, it was just funny to me. My first impression, it was funny because there's this skinny, you know, white guy with these big lips and everything and, you know, the way he was strutting and he didn't really quite have his little dance routines together. <laughs> there's never ever been another band that looked so right on stage.
They have like a record for whatever kind of mood you're in. There's something by the stones that's there for you, whether it's like a freak out mental track or a beautiful, beautiful ballad. I felt the Rolling Stones was radical, and I was into all that get off of my cloud and satisfaction was real funky, and it was big among the black audience also. People love to see a group of friends doing what they love doing and having a great time and staying successful. I think it's a true measure of the sort of uh, the magic that was there, the sheer chemistry that is there, that that air still carries around with them, them yet, even though they're, they're middle-aged guys, you know. The strength of the stones were that they didn't slavishly follow trends and there was nothing peace, love and flowers about Jumping Jack Flash. Talk about things that matter. That's what the Stones did. They talked about things that matter. They went out there a bit. You know, they kind of drifted and 
got strange, you know, the devil thing. Everyone, Ooh, what does that mean? Then? Baby, I want your name. I want your name. 